Welcome all, I'm Jake and this is Ray Vinyl Reminiscence, the channel where I share my passion for hardcore from around 91 to 95. You're tuned into the fifth and final episode of this Pick and Mix mini series, where we've taken a random selection from each year, 91 through to 94 so far, talked through the tracks, done a little mix, and come up with a tasty little set. In this episode, we're going to look at the final year, the year that saw me exit hardcore for over 20 years. I've got some great tracks to play for you in this video, so let's take a walk without closing it behind us through the door of 1995. So here we are on the 95 episode already. Definitely not the easiest one out of all of them to have made. Came with its own challenges. A few surprises as I went through the collection and I've got some thoughts and reflections to share with you about this time along the way. If you're tuning in for the first time, my recommendation would be you at least go back and start off with the 91 episode and follow it chronologically. But that's not absolutely necessary, of course. So let's get started on this final part of the journey. 1995. Well, by now, my hair would have given Rapunzel a run for her money. I'm not sure if I was caught in the middle of a game of rock, paper and scissors here, or if I was just telling someone to bugger off. Maybe a hairdresser. I decided that having one nipple pierce wasn't enough, so I'd had the left one mullered too. I literally don't know why or how I let someone do that to my body, but I did. No real landmarks for this year, in my mind, or going through my photo albums. I know I had my 21st birthday halfway through this year, can't remember it. There's three girlfriends across this period that I can recall, the last of which I think I had a four year relationship with. And yet I can't clearly recall single day or night's memory of those whole relationships. Is it just me or is it like that for everyone with their memories? Let me know in the comments. It's really poignant actually, just how much of our lives vanish into a fog of obscurity as the years go by. What I have more than clear memories from this time is more of a feeling and it's quite an unsettled one. I think it signifies not just that transition from the sort of golden years of the rave era, but also that movement from youth to adulthood. Like I said in a previous episode, at this age as a young man, I was desperately trying to find myself and my place in the world. Just a blink of an eye ago, it had all just been about what rave we were going to go to next, who was the best DJ, where to meet for a session that night, what bike I wanted next. And before you know it, teenage years are gone, and suddenly you've got a boss. And a bit of debt and grown-ups expect like stuff from you because apparently you're a grown-up now physically at least i did find this photo of my bedroom from back in 95 which at first made me feel a bit better about the state of mayhem that my teenager's bedroom's always in but after closer inspection sent shivers down my spine as i spotted the two records just lying around one of those records i'm going to play in this set that original copy in that photo went many years ago in that box of records i've spoken about that i sold you know what, looking at how I used to treat some of my later vinyl, maybe 50 quid weren't such a bad price after all. So although it's a little bit sad, because this year marks the end of that golden era, on the flip side, at least by this point, we now had all of those amazing tunes from 91 through to 95 in existence. So let's get started. As with the previous four years, I searched through the vault for 1995 and picked out the first date. Wait, scrap that. Turns out, after selling all my 95 vinyl, I only bought very few back. Six, in fact. And that's because, as I said before, I only own vinyl that really, really matters to me. So this 95 set is going to be as much about my journey out and away from hardcore as it is about 1995. So I'm only going to play the six tunes from 95 that I liked enough to buy back. Then I'm going to fast forward a year and play a track from 96. I own just one single hardcore record from that whole year. That 96 track is actually directly linked to the tune I'm going to open with as well, so it works well with the story. Towards the end, I'm going to play a short selection of clips from some of my favourite house tracks from the direction I took when I departed hardcore in this year. I simply call them house, but progressive house, progressive trance, whatever. It's what I was playing and DJing out from 96 onwards. And then finally, we're going to end this set with something a little bit different. Although 95 is very much not my favourite year, I'm actually quite pleased with how this set came together. You can make your own judgments on it when you hear it. 
Now that we're coming to the end of this little pick and mix mini series, it'd be time to release the full mix sets for each of the five years. Hopefully you enjoy listening to them as much as I have recording them. So let's get to the opening track for this 95 set. The tune I've chosen to kick off with is a remix, a very 95-y remix of a track on Formation Records featured in the Formation episode, a real favourite of mine. It's a remix done by a DJ we've also featured in a previous episode. This tune is the 95 Slipmat awaited remix of Incredible Bass. <laughs> So not as high on the BPMs as some other tracks in this year, I've got the tempo set on dead zero so it's not pitched up or down so you can get a real sense for the speed. Nothing will ever touch the original for me, but Slipmat does make good use of that signature sample and it is a driving track. So most of you will know the original, it's a much darker, more moody feel than this tune. Slipmat's happy hardcore influence is quite apparent on here. So as part of this driving energy and happier vibe, it's quite sample heavy this track. It chops and changes and then mixes up with these kind of intermittent rewinds. Okay, so it's time for the first mix. And we're going to return here to a record label that featured in the last episode. Phil Wells and Ron Wells' For The Floor recordings. This label actually completely bailed me out on the 95 because the majority of what I own from this year is on that label. This tune features Alison Limerick's Where Love Lives. It has a nice little drummy intro, perfect for a run with a few little chops. So that's DJ Pooch, Volume 9, and it's Side A. 
as with all these four to floor recordings in 94 and 95, taking very classic samples and putting some meat on the bones. So I've noticed running through these years from 91 to 95, as we get to these later times, sort of 94 and particularly into 95, there's almost a formula that these tracks run to that's been established. Have a listen to this next section. If you heard this, you could pretty much pick this out as being 95. Right, we're ready for the next mix, and we're going to stay with four to floor recordings. I spoke about that formula just now, and what I will say is these are really DJ friendly tracks. Nice long run ins, fairly clean drums, not a lot of clash concerns. This next tune has a highly sped up piano sample from JT Company's Don't Deal With Us. Queuing up, ready for the exit of that piano section. So it's volume 10 and that's DJ Pooch again. I'll say that piano sped up like that, hectic as you like. But as with before, it's very soon layered up with some real chunky drums. Let it roll. Let it roll. So as the track progresses, we get a sense of that formula again, but it was a reliable formula. It produced decent dance floor tracks. We drop down again now into a very, very 95-y sound. So leading us on to the next mix, and we're going to depart from four to floor recordings for a short while and pull out a tune that was massive in this year. I spoke just now about tunes being DJ friendly, and this one has it plus tax. It's a proper goose bumper to mix with this one. It has a long drum run, and every single new loop and cycle, it builds more and more in power. Really enjoyed this one. <laughs>
That tune, as you've seen, is Jimmy J's and Cruelty, Cruelty, Cruelties, DJ's in full effect. This is a banging tune. Like, it kind of surfs really close to being cheesy, with some of the samples in particular, but it has such a driving power, it really carries it. DJ, DJ, DJ. Now, I'm pretty certain most people watching this will have heard this tune before. It was very, very popular. If not, and it's the first time, let me know. I'll be really interested. I think what it's best known for, though, is this great big wide section, this big smile section that comes up now, adding an absolute element of class to this track. <laughs> What makes this big euphoric moment so awesome is this point as it starts to build up and those punches come in and then we get this little multiple wax on what sounds like scaffolding and then it kicks off with so much power. <laughs> See, a real late entry in the world of hardcore, but that's quality. Now to balance that happy vibe, we have got some areas of flat out seriousness. Without a doubt, one of the classics on remix records. So, the Jimmy J Cruelty tune returns to that euphoric sound, and then we have this lovely run of powerful clean drums to mix the next track in. We're going to return to Ford Floor Recordings, and this tune has a very recognisable sample from Yoke's Music for the People. Queuing it up, ready to throw it in at the drop. <laughs> So DJ Pooch again, Ford Floor Recordings Volume 11 this time. That music for the people, the yoke sampled air, slightly snipped and looped around, works really well. But a very, very 95 feel to this tune.
Right, next mix. And, and this is really a veritable banquet of old school sounds, this. So we're gonna mix into another four to floor recordings tune here. I said it was gonna bail us out in this year. I had to let this run for a little while before throwing it in, just to sort of set it in exactly where I want it so there were no clashes. But I'm gonna bring this next track in right at a point where we have this lovely classic sound from Mystery Man's Love E, a tune featured in a previous episode. Let's do it. So DJ Pooch again, returning to that volume 10, but this time the A side. So that love E sound on the intro there, and then we kick into that shock the beat piano, layered up with some tasty drums. So I noticed that Phil Wells actually posted in the reviews on Discogs for the For The Floor label that this label was put together to provide some cheeky classic updates for the developing happy hardcore scene. And I think they did that well and truly. I'll say I own hardly anything from 95 and what I do own is mostly this stuff. Right, next mix. But that's it for me for 95. So now we're gonna play the 96 track I mentioned at the start. The one that actually is directly linked to the first tune we played, which was the Slip Matt Awaited remix of Incredible Bass. Now if you were to wanna to buy that tune and search for it, you'd have to be very careful that you didn't, instead of that one, end up with this one. Because this is on the exact same label, same title, but this is the 96 Slip Mat Awaited remix of Incredible Bass. Let's mix it in. So if you used to go through my vinyl collection in date order, you'd find you got to 96, just this one record. And then after that, 
nothing until 2019. Now, as I said, if you ordered this tune thinking you were going to get the 95 remix, you might be a bit disappointed if you got this, only in as much as it's a very different sounding track. The tempo's up, as you'd expect for 96, and you can see that on the pitch control, but it also has moved a little bit further into that kind of happy hardcore arena. But it does kick. So I'll play this one more section from this track to sort of exemplify what I was saying about the 95 remix, which was that it's quite far from the original Incredible Bass, which was very, very dark and moody, an amazing tune. But does it justice in the Happy Hardcore arena? But this 96 remix has taken it a whole step further even more and with much more of a happy vibe to it. Once again, back is the Incredible. So there you have it, 96, and as I said, the latest purchase until 2019. What I wanted to do before we do the last mix, which is going to be an unusual mix, is I wanted to play a short selection as part of this journey of some of the house tracks that then pulled me away from the hardcore scene and that I started playing at home and playing out. Now this is a hardcore channel, I know. But it's quite fitting because it's part and parcel of this story moving away from hardcore and into this different scene as the old rave seemed very much fragmented and went off in all different directions. So I just wanted to play a few clips for some tunes that mean a lot to me from this next chapter. Now there's many to choose from, these are just some of the standouts. And the first is Gat Decor and Passion. Many a set started with this tune, the lovely opener, the building, and then kick straight into this gorgeous piano section. second little snippet of audio porn to drag people up onto the dance floor is Kendo's Nakasaki. tune has a great section in the middle where it just breaks down and builds up and up and up in intensity and then bang kicks off again. Next tune, can't actually remember where I heard this first, what mixtape it was, but I loved it from the minute I heard it. Grace's Not Over Yet. It's not actually that often on a dance track that full vocals actually do it for me. 
this is an exception. quick peek at a tune that is pure class in eeriness and atmosphere. Age of Love, The Age of Love. Finally, before the last mix, an absolute gem of a trancey house track, Spooky and Little Bullet. So before we close, I just want to share with you how much I've loved taking this journey, digging through old photographs, casting my mind back to what was happening in my life, in the world. It's definitely not the last time that we'll revisit some of these golden years in isolation. I'm going to do some sets from my favourite tunes from some of these years at some point. I'm looking forward to that. I mentioned in a previous episode just how much looking back on these years has really driven home. Just how quickly time passes by. And now it helps, hopefully, to remember how precious this moment is. I think we can appreciate the present moment from two directions. Firstly, by recognising that some of the things that we have today are things that we once dreamt of. I mentioned before how I can remember clearly just how amazing it was being able to simply drive a car when I first passed my test. How much I dreamt of being able to do that when I was young. When I was really young, I can remember saying, when I'm grown up, I'm going to buy mountains of sweets and chocolate. Imagine my excitement if I'd have known that at the age of 17, I'd be stacking the pick and mix stand in Woolworths. What else do we have that we've forgotten to appreciate? Things we've obtained or achieved? What truly precious things? The other angle is to recognise that, just as we look back at old photos and reminisce over past times, today too is a time that one day we'll look back at, perhaps fondly. I'm a bit weird like that. I sometimes look at the scene in front of me and imagine that I'm in a photograph now, one that I'll look back at later and go, oh, I wish I was back there. Puts a different perspective on it. Focuses me a bit more on now. Whether it's because these are times of joy to one day miss, or times of challenge to one day look back on and recognise as part of our growth, our lives are always and only now. So thank you for being a part of my present moment and this stage in my life, on this channel, in these videos. So before the last mix, I'll remind you that the full mixes will be coming in the next few days for each of these five years in YouTube video format and with the links to the audios. To close this final chapter, I want to do something a little bit different. To musically illustrate my journey away from hardcore and into more progressive house and trance. I've done my small selection from 95, I've done that latest purchase from 96, and now I'm going to very strangely blend the last part of my journey into this set. To do that, we're going to knock down from 45 to 33 and at the very same time bring the pitch up to slow down the world of 95 hardcore to the tempo of house. Then I'm going to mix in what I consider to be one of the finest tunes in this genre that took me away in 96. I first heard this track on the very popular Renaissance album. It's a really healing tune. This is Moonchild's Variations on a Theme. Love to you all. Take care. I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>